It's Electric Focus and one of the common questions I get and one of the things I see a lot of comments on things like ZapMap and other media is when I get to a charger, I'm looking at the charger and it says 150 kilowatts and I'm only getting 80 kilowatts. So I'm not getting the advertised speed of the charger. So what I'm gonna do now is explain to you why that happens. So let's get into the video. Right, so you've bought a car and you've been told it can charge at really fast speeds and you get to a really fast charger and you're disappointed because you're not seeing the speed you're expected to get. And I see this comment a lot on Instavolt 120 kilowatt chargers and I'll explain at the end why that is happening. So the first thing to think about is what is the maximum capability of your car? So that's number one. Once you understand that, then at least you know where to start from. So for example, I've got the Jaguar I-Pace, the maximum speed I can get in that car of charge is 100 kilowatts. And we're talking about ultra fast charging, so that's 100 kilowatts and above. So if I'm out there and I see a charger that's say 120 kilowatts, 150 kilowatts, 350 kilowatts, I know that I'm definitely gonna get the opportunity to get my maximum speed because my maximum is 100. I will not get 120, 150, 350 because the maximum capability of my car is 100. So that's number one thing to know. The second one to know is about the temperature. So batteries have what's called a battery management system. And say batteries have, most do these days, most modern EVs have a battery management system which is a cooling system that regulates the temperature of the battery because it's important the battery's at the right temperature to get at maximum speed. So if it's over temperature, that can affect speed because it's protecting the cells to make sure they don't get damaged. If it's under temperature, it's really cold, again, it doesn't perform well, so it takes time to warm up and therefore you're not gonna get the maximum speed. So if you've just left home, on a cold day, driven down to a charger just a few minutes away and started charging, you're probably gonna be seeing slow speeds at the beginning as the battery warms up. And if you're on a very, very hot day, it may be that when you get to a charger, your battery management system is regulating the speed of the charge coming in because the cells are very hot, particularly if you've been driving on motorways. So that's how temperature impacts things. The next thing is when you turn up at a charger, you need to look at the state of charge that your battery is at. So is it at a low state of charge or a high state of charge? Because that makes a difference. Because batteries need to regulate the amount of power coming into them to again, protect the battery cells. So batteries don't like to be charged very fast when it gets to the end of the state of charge. So that's why you might have heard that it's best to finish charging around 80, 85% and move on to another charger because that last 80 to 100% can take as long as the charge from 10 to 80% because of the battery management system regulating the amount of power that's coming into the battery. So if you're at a low state of charge, you expect to see fairly fast speeds. As you go through the charge towards the end, you expect to see very slow speeds. So it's good to charge between 10 and 80% to maximize the speed you're getting. And that's where you'll hear this terminology, the charging curve, because it starts off getting fast speeds and as it goes through the charge, it tapers off, so you get this charging curve. And that varies by car. So next, it's all about the charger itself. So if you get to a ultra fast charger, let's say it's a 120 kilowatt charger, and you know you can get 100 kilowatts as in my case, the Jaguar I-Pace, as your maximum speed, you're on quite a slow uh, state of charge. So let's say I'm on 20% state of charge. It's a nice warm day. It's not too hot, not too cold. I've driven a, a reasonable distance. So you're thinking kind of optimum temperature conditions for the battery to get its maximum speed coming in and the state of charge at a good level to get that maximum speed. And then I plug the car in and I'm not seeing very fast speeds at all. Is there a hub that you're at with lots of other cars charging and there could be a maximum pull on the grid which is impacting that charger? Are you on a charger 
that allows two cars to charge at once and the other car is charging at the same time as you, and therefore you're gonna see lower speeds. Or are you on a charger that you're on there on your own and then you're seeing just a low speed from the beginning to later on in the charge. Now that could indicate there's a problem because it's unlikely then to be something to do with the conditions you're in because if it's a, that kind of conditions then you should expect to see pretty fast speeds. So there could be a problem with the charger and that's where you should contact the charge point operator and just check to see that there's not something wrong with the charger itself. The next point is really, really key and this is the one that people miss. And this is something that I've seen a lot of comments on ZapMap when it comes to InstaVolt chargers. There's quite a few InstaVolt chargers out there that are 120 kilowatt. Now this is nothing about InstaVolt. InstaVolt is a great network. It's consistently seen as the most reliable network out there. Um, very easy to use chargers, highly recommend them. So this isn't about InstaVolt. This is just about the technology and the charger that you just need to be aware of. So, some of the 120 kilowatt chargers, if you look at the small print on the side of the charger, it'll tell you the capability of the cable itself. So this is the maximum current that it can deliver to your battery. And just very briefly, it's the current times the battery voltage that gives you the maximum power that that battery can take. So for example, these intervolt chargers I'm talking about, they have a maximum current of 200 amps on the cable. You then have most cars these days work on a 400 volt architecture. I'll come on to 800 volt in a minute, but most are 400 volt. As on my car, Jaguar I-Pace, 400 volt. So if you've got a 200 amp cable and a 400 amp architecture, then therefore it's 200 times 400, which is 80,000 watts or 80 kilowatts. So regardless of it saying 120 kilowatts on the charger, the maximum speed I can get out of a charger is 80 kilowatts and that's absolutely maximum. So I wouldn't be surprised to see under 80 kilowatts on that charger a lot of the time. So I hope that's clear because that's really, really important. Let's get on to 800 volt architecture now. And there's certain cars out there now that have 800 volt and that is the Kia EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Porsche Taycan and the Audi GT. So those cars have 800 volt architecture. So what's the difference there? Well, simply you take the cable current again and you times that by 800 instead of 400. So therefore you get much faster charging. So if we look at that, InstaVolt, for example, which is 200 amps. So 200 times 800, that then gives you 160 kilowatts. Now we know that the charger itself can only take 120 kilowatts. So therefore you should expect to get the maximum possible speed on that charger with an 800 volt car. And that's why 800 volt will probably be the future because not only can you get that scenario where you get much faster speeds, Actually, it means you need thinner cables. The problem with cables is the more power going through the cable, the more, the thicker it needs to be and therefore the heavier it gets. And, you know, heavy cables aren't great, are they? I mean, they're heavy enough as it is. So if you can use 800 volt architecture to then reduce the size of the cable, but still get a pretty fast charge, that's gonna be a good thing, right? So 800 volt, I think will be the future. Anyway, I hope that was useful. As always, thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon.